Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part eight of our framework design and development video series. So this is the continuation of our data driven testing in Selenium of part seven. So I would request you to watch part seven before watching this because this is going to be a complete continuation. All right. So in this part, we're going to discuss about writing reusable library to read data using JXL. Actually, in part seven, we wrote a code which was more straightforward and we're trying to pass the column number and row number directly and we're trying to retrieve the value out from the Excel sheet. That was really a pain point. So in this part, we are going to deal a little more detailed way. Custom libraries. So writing a custom libraries. So we'll create a reusable library for reading the data from Excel sheet using JXL. So we are going to make our data reading more generic rather passing the hard coded column index and row index to get the data as we did in the previous part. So that's what we are going to do in this part. So let's not waste our time. Let's jump into our Eclipse. So I'm going to change this stuff. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this numbers here and I'm going to bring some meaningful column name itself directly. As you know, the problem which we were talking about in the last part, we we're saying like Today, the search term is in the zeroth index of the column. What if tomorrow some new columns added or what if this particular column search term is moved somewhere else? We'll have a problem with this particular code since the column index is exactly pointing to the hard coded value. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a dictionary in Java, which will store all the column from an Excel sheet every time it executes. And then I'm going to assign the key value of the dictionary as the index of the column name. So that even if the Excel sheets column name moves from one place to another, we will have a dynamic index of the column every time since every time the code will open the Excel sheet, read all the column names and stores the new index in the dictionary. All right. So actually we have a complete article for even this operation in our execute automation website. So this is the article data driven testing in Selenium using JXL part two. All right. So here's the complete text for this. So probably if you have time, just go ahead and read this article because we also have a complete code for this. All right. Even what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy paste this for saving my time because it's pretty simple and straightforward for me, right? So uh, the full code is important, of course. So I'm going to copy paste this full code. All right, let's copy this. So I'm going to modify the existing code which we wrote already. All right, let's replace this code. Right? See, so simple for me. So here I have used hash table to store all my data. So it's Java Tutorial. And okay, the constructor here is not Excel sheet driver, it is Excel lib. And there is one more problem here. It's column less than. All right. So let me quickly run through this code and explain you what this code actually does. So here, as we did in the last part, same thing. We are just trying to uh, get the Excel sheet path in this workbook method. And then we are getting the sheet. So here I'm just passing the sheet one. And then I'm trying to get the row count using this method. So it's, there is an inbuilt method available in the worksheet using dot get row count. You can get the row count. We have return one more method here column dictionary what it does is it gets the complete columns it will try to iterate through all the columns of my of my excel sheets and then it puts the column name using this read cell method so this is the read cell method so we're just putting all the column names here and this is the column index all right so here what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create the key as the column name and the value as the column index. So there is also a get cell method I have written. So if I pass the column name, it will actually return me the the actual underlying 
data out from it all right so let me go back to my google search test and this method doesn't even exist what i can do here is read cell of excel dot get cell of the column name so the column name is search terms so i'm going to pass this column name here and the row number so let's say we can read the selenium so i'm going to pass this row number as one so now if i okay and it also expects me to initialize the let's leave this up now that's fine so now if i run this test hopefully it should open the browser and it should type the term selenium in the google search text box the page is loaded that's great did you see that it typed the selenium there we just did the expected stuff here so we had just passed the sell the search term here directly instead of passing the column index so even if the column index changes this stuff will still work but let me do this a little more tweaking here so instead of doing this excel dot read cell and again passing the excel dot cell get cell why don't we write one generic method which does this operation so i'm going to this excel library actually this code doesn't exist in my article so i'm just writing it right now public static string read cell of string column name comma int row number and this will in turn returns me this will in turn uses the get cell method so the get cell of the column name which is nothing but the column name here okay and also it uses the read cell method read cell of comma row number all right and i'm going to return this guy so now this method will actually does our expected behavior so here instead of putting this method huh what does it say oh i'm sorry all right so so now the method is a little more shortened than the one which we did earlier all we need to do is just the pa just pass the the column name and then pass the row number that that's the magic so let's try to run this once again and see if things works or not all right the page is loaded and it typed the selenium there great that's the expected run so this is what is really the expected behavior of our data driven testing so all we have did here is we have written a generic library to read the data from an excel sheet and whatever method is required for reading a data from excel sheet getting the row count and getting uh, reading the cell values all these methods are available in this particular class file excellent if you want to iterate this value then probably you can do it very easily using a for loop so for let's say int row is equal to one comma row is less than or equal to excel dot row count and then and then row plus plus all right and if you try to get the value out from this you can all, always e very easily do that so so instead of doing all these things here i'm just trying to read the value and see and show you whether this really returns me the value or not so i'm going to put the system dot on the print ln and i'm going to copy this particular code right here like this and i'm going to pass the value row here all right and then i'm going to comment this code out and we will see whether this code is really working as expected or not so instead of opening all these things i'm just going to command this code so why i'm trying to do all these things is i just wanted to demonstrate to you that you can even iterate the all the data within an excel sheet using this particular iterations right so let me run this code oops okay that's fine so it says array index out of bound exception so we need to somehow check okay maybe this is not equal to if we save this and if we run this okay see this is the expected one 
So it iterates for selenium and execute automation. So tomorrow, if our test involves like two scenarios to be tested, or two uh, with one scenario we need to test for two different data, then we can write for loop to read the data and populate that in the application's UI and run the test. Right? That's it, guys. This is the end of our data-driven testing in Selenium using JXL. So please try to add some comment in my YouTube video and also in my website. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.